I'm Tiffany, and this is from Momma's Kitchen. This is where I get to share with you the old-fashioned recipes and skills that I learned from my Momma in her kitchen. Well, y'all, Easter is right around the corner. It's time to start thinking about our Easter menus and Easter meal plans and what's going to be on the table for Easter dinner. I'm going to be sharing a dessert with you today, and it is a very, very special one. It is my Momma's banana pudding. I have been so excited to share this with y'all. I've been looking forward to this. This was definitely one of Momma's go-to desserts. I can remember her calling and saying, hey, you want to make banana pudding? She already knew the answer. <laughs> the answer was always yes, and I'm so excited to share this recipe with you today. I know people have different ways that they make banana pudding. In my opinion, this is the only way to make it. It is the best. It is Momma's banana pudding. Today's video is also part of a collaboration hosted by my very dear friends, Sammy and Valerie, and I'll have their channels linked down in the description box for you. Thank you so much for asking me to participate. There are some amazing, amazing ladies, YouTube channels that are participating in this collab, and you're going to get so much wonderful inspiration for things that you can add to your Easter menu. So there will be a playlist down in the description box. Make sure you go check it out because I'm telling you, there's going to be some great videos to watch. Now, if you're new around here, I'm Tiffany. Welcome. This is from my mom's kitchen. And I like to share a lot of the old recipes, the memories, the skills that I learned growing up. A lot of those from my mama and her kitchen. I like to share those with you. That's what I do around here. I also have a second channel. It's a vlogging channel called Our Small Town Life. So if you want to keep up with more of our day-to-day -day life living in a small town in Alabama, we'd love for you to follow us over there as well. Mama always made this in a double boiler. I have got to get one that works well for me. Everything I have right now, I have trouble getting, uh, getting it close enough to the water. And so it takes forever for my pudding, my custard to thicken. So I'm going to put it straight in a pot. If you do it this way, you have to pay very, very, very close attention to it. A uh, double boiler is the way to go. I just don't have one that works well for me right now. So I'm going to put in two thirds a cup sugar, one third cup all purpose flour, good sprinkling of salt, probably about a quarter to half a teaspoon, two cups of milk. And this is one of those things that I can remember. Mama, she never like measured the milk. She always made this in the exact same pot and she knew exactly where to pour it to, <laughs> to get the amount of milk that she wanted. Now I'm going to separate my eggs and look how beautiful they are. I got to brag on our chickens <laughs> a little bit, but I'm going to separate the yolks from the whites. The yolks are going to go into our pot and we'll save the whites for our topping. Go ahead and turn my heat on to about medium, medium high. I'm gonna whisk this together and then I'm gonna swap over to my spatula. I actually decided to use my wooden spoon. I have this on about medium to medium high heat right now. We don't want to boil it, so you gotta kinda watch that and adjust as needed. We just want to heat this slowly so that it, it thickens nicely while it cooks. I'll turn the heat down as soon as this gets good and warm. Now, if you're doing this in a double boiler, you would have keep your heat turned up on your eye. You would have that water boiling underneath a pot that was sitting on top. So that's what a double boiler is. It's two pots on top of each other. And you have water in the one on the bottom boiling. And then this oh, mixture God. would be in the pot on the top. And that's definitely more forgiving when it comes to your heat. But doing it directly in a pot on the eye like I am, you have to be careful with how hot you get it and make sure you stir it constantly. This is always one of the most tedious parts is just waiting on this to thicken up. Mama always told me it was a great way to learn patience. <laughs> I remember asking her when I was little, this would be my job, standing and stirring. And I would ask her, is it done? Is it good? Is this good enough? Is this good enough? And she'd tell me, no, practice your patience. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to check this. This is ready. This is that point where I would say, Mom, all, how about this? <laughs> she would say, yes, it's done. And I'd feel so rewarding. So it takes about 10 minutes and doing it directly in the pot like this. I'm probably closer to 12 to 15 if you do it in a double boiler, but... 
on the back side of this spoon, I can run my finger through it and see that defined line. I moved it off the heat and I'm going to stir in my vanilla. It's about a teaspoon of vanilla. Now I'm going to start layering this uh, dish right here. My mama bought that for me and it has become my banana pudding dish. It's a three quart. I think it's three quart. And what I'm going to do is just start layering. I'm going to put a little bit of my custard on the bottom and then layer vanilla wafers, slice banana, more custard. We're just going to keep doing that. I'm going to use almost the entire box of vanilla wafers. I'm going to save just a few to add to the top once it's finished to make it look nice and pretty. And I'm going to use five bananas today because they were larger. If you have smaller, you might do six bananas. And you want to make sure your bananas are nice and ripe because the texture and the sweetness of a ripe banana is really what you want in this banana pudding. Now I'm going to make our topping, or what here in the South we like to call calf slobber, <laughs> and that is our egg whites from earlier and about a quarter cup of sugar, and I'm going to beat that together. After just a couple of minutes, this will get where it makes peaks, and that's what we're looking for because when we spread this on the top of our banana pudding, I'm going to spread it out and then I'm going to come back and make some peaks because that is what will get nice and golden brown in the oven. Pull up some little peaks. Essentially just touching it to it and letting it pull up. This is going to go in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 20 minutes. Y'all, isn't she lovely? You can see how all those peaks turn nice and golden brown. I cannot wait to plate some of this up and have some banana pudding. If you are used to making banana pudding with one of those boxed pudding mixes, you've got to try this. It is so much better. And if you just like banana pudding in general, try this recipe, y'all. I'm telling you, it is the best. I'm gonna let this cool down just a little bit and then I'm gonna scoop some out and have me some banana pudding. I can already tell you it's gonna be good. Using those ripe bananas, if you can get ripe bananas, that does make a huge difference in this and just really upping that banana flavor and giving this pudding a nice texture. And my bananas, I feel like they were just right today. <laughs> so I cannot wait to have some of this banana pudding. I'll show you what it looks like, plate it up. Matter of fact, I saved a few vanilla wafers to kind of put around the edge. I'm going to do that, give you a nice shot of it, looking all nice and pretty, plate some up. But before I do that, let me remind you that today's video is part of a collaboration. Make sure you check out that playlist down in the description box. Y'all get in the kitchen and make memories with the people you love. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all. Don't go anywhere. Let me show you what this looks like on the plate.